If you want to find the lowest or highest value within a given range, like for the month of January, I want to find out which employee ID had the lowest sales. You can see down below I've got my lowest and highest, or our minimum and maximum functions. So instead of looking at it and eyeballing it, going, okay, let's see, 10,000 looks like it's the lowest. I mean, that's easy when you have just a small range to work with, but you can imagine if it was huge, why go through all that work and eyeballing it? Go ahead and use the, well, in this case, the minimum function to find the lowest value within the range. And there's a couple ways you can insert the function, as we talked about in the previous training video. You can hit the equals key on the keyboard, and then just type in M-I-N-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, no, just M-I-N for minimum function. And you can see down below it's highlighted and it says in the pop-up it returns the smallest number in a set of values and it will ignore logical values and text. So if I go ahead and I select January as part of the range, it's going to ignore that. So now that I have it highlighted, hit the tab key on the keyboard to pop it open. There's the syntax and it says, okay, what's the first range or number one? So the first range, I can just go ahead and click and drag to select it and say that's it. If I had an additional range, like I also want to include the minimum in February to find out between the two months which one has the lowest value, then hit comma, and then go ahead and click and drag to select it. Now you don't have to select it, you can of course go ahead and type it in. If what you want to enter is not in your viewable area, like maybe it's over in column HH, in which case you can of course go ahead and type in HH7 through, and then same column HH row 10. In any case, let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's just keep it simple and do the selected range for January up above and hit enter and there you go there's the lowest value for that given range. The other way that you can do it and let's do it for the maximum now to find the highest value within that range which is going to be 35,000 is instead of typing in the equals key you can come up here on the formula bar and click on FX opens up the insert function window or you can close out and come up here on the formulas tab click on the same button that we just clicked on that was down below in the formula bar or you can go ahead and click on one of the drop down arrows to find the minimum maximum functions. But let's just go ahead and do it right here since it's so obvious that no matter what tab we're on, that we don't have to click on the formulas tab to access it. So click on it. And the reason why you may want to do it this way is because if you don't know anything about the function or you want to learn more about it, it's got it right here. That is, once you find it, and so there's the minimum because it was the most recent, now we want to find the maximum. Well, it's right there. Another recent one that we've used, or just go ahead and delete that and type in max, click go, it's right there. Maximum returns the largest value in a set of values and ignores logical values and text. Great, go ahead and click okie dokie. Opens up the function arguments window, and it says, well, right now it's looking at cell C15. Why? Because it's looking at cells that are adjacent to it that contain numbers to try to help you out, thinking, okay, that's probably the start of where you want to look. No, it's up here. So you can either go ahead and Come in the number one, delete it, and then type in your range. And it's going to be C7 through, which is colon, and then C10. And then you can see over to the right, it gives you the data within that range. There's C7, there's C8, C9, C10. And that matches up. Great. Or you can just go ahead and delete it and click on the collapsible dialog box button. So it collapses the window. Go ahead and click and drag. Then hit the enter key on the keyboard to pop it back open. And you can do a second range. Like, well, without even clicking on the collapsible dialog box button, if you click and drag another range, it automatically collapses. And then when you're done selecting it, it pops it back open. Now you may think, hey, I want to do it that way. That's great if you can see the data. But if you can't, then you may want to collapse it so you can see what's behind it because you only got so much space to move this thing around when it's expanded. So click on that button to expand it or hit the enter key on the keyboard. It'll expand it without accepting it. So once it's open, then you can go ahead and accept it by hitting the enter key on the keyboard, which by the way, you see how OK is highlighted in blue there? That means that that button's active. So when you hit enter on the keyboard, it's going to activate the highlighted button, meaning the same thing as if you just clicked on OK. So if I hit enter, which I won't do that because I don't want that one, and I hit enter now, it accepts it. And let's see by double clicking on it, it's got the range up above, highlighted in blue, and the highest in there is 35,000. And then, instead of repeating the same thing and inserting the function over and over again for February, March, and April, you can either copy and paste it or use the autofill handle. So if I go ahead and I select this and I do Control c to copy, then I click in here and do Control v as in Victor to paste, Control v as in Victor to paste, Control v to paste, that works. Or you can go ahead and hover over the cell. And if their cells are adjacent, you can use the autofill handle by hovering over the lower right-hand corner until you can see the black cross, and then you can click and drag, and voila. So let's see if it checks out. Looking up here in the formula bar, it's the max formula. 
not for column C because it updated with the autofill handle to column D. And the highest value within there is 15,000. Now one last thing that I forgot to mention in the previous training video when you use the autofill feature, for example, when it's being used in columns, there's actually a quicker way when you're using the autofill handle. So for example, if I go ahead and delete the averages here, and let's say I just entered the average for the first employee ID here, and I want to use the autofill handle, as we did in the previous training video, to click and drag it down to automatically copy and paste that formula into the adjacent cells. Instead, if you want to autofill the column really fast, go ahead and hover over the lower right-hand corner until you see the black cross, and then double-click really fast, and voila. You don't even have to click and drag. Double-click will do it. Will it do it as far as rows? No. Let me go ahead and delete that, and then select the first cell, and double-click really fast. It doesn't go over. It'll only go down. So I have to click and drag for rows, going column to column, as opposed to a column going from row to row. Double-click, and it automatically fills it in that column.